Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video, having previously made the various lunar lander proposals, the Dynetics one, the Blue Origin one, and SpaceX's Starship lunar lander, I decided to proceed with the Lunar Gateway even though I'm not a big fan of the idea at all, but uh, potentially the modules will be useful for other things eventually, so I went ahead with it. And so we have the two core modules here, if you will. Uh, I did not do the docking ports, let me just be clear. Docking ports and the solar panels are not mine, the rest uh, here is. And the two modules we have here are the Halo module, which is the habitation module. This is the hard shell habitation module based on the Cygnus spacecraft. There's also an inflatable habitation module potentially. And then this is the PPE, the power and propulsion module. And it's got the xenon gas, hydrazine. I went with hydrazine as the RCS fuel. There could be something else. And I've also got ion engines, the advanced electric propulsion system, 13 kilowatts. And we've got various antennae. I based it off of a particular render artist impression, you know. I mean, they haven't built it yet, so I did the best I could. Since the habitation module is based on Cygnus, I have a pretty good idea about that. Also, I can compare the size of it based and uh, judge the mass based on like Unity or Destiny or something like that. And so I can cross reference like that. So pretty good on the mass of that, though obviously not perfect. Uh, so the Halo module, there's a standard size. I also decided to make a larger version, uh, a 4 meter, because I thought 3 meter was a little bit cramped, especially if I ever want to use these kinds of things for like a Mars mission instead. So I made a larger version that's also heavier, of course. And I made, uh, you know, commensurate versions of the antennae and the PPE uh, so that they would all fit. But yeah. So this is the 3 meterish version and the docking ports fit as you can see. There's, uh, these docking ports are from CX Aerospace. Uh, without them, uh, this side looks like that. And so there's a node there that you can pay, place the docking port on. Uh, there's not that much food, water, and oxygen. It would rely on a supply craft that docks on one of these. Uh, this docking port on the front would either have the airlock module or it would have uh, Orion directly docking to it. So that's as I understand it. The antennae extend, of course. And I don't know why it has all these antennae. I think they probably look different on either side, so it's not for the same kind of thing. But uh, I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> I mean, besides, I didn't get a very good look at the uh, different antennae, so I just did the best I could on that. So stock solar panels, XT4 solar panel array as modified by Realism Overhaul scaled to 182% seems to work fine. And I've put 5 tons of xenon gas because that's what they said it had in it. I put 1 ton of hydrazine uh, for the RCS thrusters. And with that, given the 2 ion engines, which it seems like it has based on a NASA paper, I really went out uh, on this one. Uh, it'll have three years and 160 days with a propellant. Uh, the, the stats for the ion engines are correct. I mean, I like I said, NASA paper. Uh, it, they've got the right ISP. They've got the right thrust. They've got the right mass even. Uh, so their stats are correct as far as I can tell. And yeah, it's got a long burn time and 10,000 meters per second. Now, uh, I'll show you how to put it together in a sec, but uh, another question I had was whether the Vulcan rocket can uh, get it to the moon. But just looking at the Delta V figures here, I'm going pro and I've fully fueled the upper stage here to Centaur X. And yeah, I don't think so, but we'll launch it anyway. Yeah, but we're probably not going to get it to the moon this time. But it'll give us a chance to double check all the... All the stuff in orbit. We'll make sure the RCS works, the ion engines work, you know, have, have a plume and everything. And that should be good. So let me save that, make a new craft. And so again, a uh, standard one is the one that actually should be launched. Uh, and we would like docking ports in between. It's up to you what docking ports to use. Uh, these CX Aerospace ones fit nicely. 
if we use the NASA docking system based on the stock part that fits like that so probably tuck it in like that and it'll look fine and off to the side it's not gonna look quite right those little that part will stick out as you can see there's no easy way of tucking in like this but the CX Aerospace one fits more properly like that so yeah, I'll just go with the CX airspace one for all the sides. Technically, if they're going to launch both the Halo module and the PP at the same time, which looks like it's the case now, uh, you don't need a docking port at the bottom unless they intend to replace the PPE with uh, new PPE. I don't know. Uh, seems like an expensive proposal, but uh, just in case, I'll put a docking port there. You just have to type Lunar Gateway to get these parts, and so we'll get the standard PPE. The larger size PPE does have more volume, but I haven't put more fuel ahead of time. It's still got the same propellant load preloaded in. And so here we've got that. On the broader side of the PPE, well, let me get the antennae on first. So there's a hidden uh, attachment node inside the body for the antennae. So you want the standard sized halo antennae. And they'll go like that. And then uh, the standard sized PPE antennae. And again, there's a hidden node in there. And it'll go like that. And then they'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, and we might as well put the ion engines. There are two nodes at the bottom here for the ion engines. One there and one there. Okay, they really are that small as far as I could tell. There was an image in the NASA paper about them, so. Okay, so... We have the solar panels. I chose this one. Symmetrize. Scale to 182. And it's uh, still a little bit underpowered. It's supposed to have... Um, well, here it says 9 kilowatts, but... It seems to have more than that outside. Uh, it's supposed to have 12.5 kilowatts on each at least I think it could be 25 kilowatts but I don't have a solar panel that will give that much and still fit on this PPE so they must have better solar panels than realism overhaul is giving us typical anyway so that's how I put it together and then of course there's a decoupler at the bottom but that's the size of it and of course you could put the food water and oxygen lithium hydroxide and it comes out to be about 15 tons this module doesn't need mli layer i mean it already has a little bit of mli going on that definitely has mli visually uh, but if you want to put it on that's fine but there's nothing that'll boil off here okay so let me load up the rocket and let me double check that we can put people inside yes we can let's just put them inside and we'll see that the portraits come up and everything. Okay, save and launch. It should have a um, controller on it. It's actually the PPE that has the controller, not the Halo. Keep that in mind because, of course, the Halo doesn't have propulsion either. In stock, I put the stock reaction wheel, a mild reaction wheel on it, but I remove it for realism overhaul. I'm not going to line up with the moon because I think that would entail a nighttime launch in this case. So I'm going to just launch it right now. And the, uh, I just used the Hitchhiker storage container internal. So yeah, I didn't make my own internal or anything. Lazy on that. Anyway, uh, it fits four, as you can see. Uh, so Thrall Up SAS is on and ignition. And launch. So I would expect that the New Glenn rocket could manage to send it to the moon, but this I don't think quite has enough. In either way, uh, in either case, the ion engine would eventually get it to the moon, you know, I'll do a whole bunch of little boosting up maneuvers. As I've implied, I'm not necessarily wedded to the idea of doing exactly what they intend with the Lunar Gateway as far as my own plans with it. I may repurpose it somewhat. Okay, just letting the boosters go here. 
not exactly how they decouple, but fine. <laughs> I'll take it for now. We could probably get rid of the fairings before starting up the second stage. So obviously my point as far as showing you how to put it together is that there will be the parts in the video description. Realism Overhaul and Textures Unlimited should be used. Ah, uh, that silly 19 minute centaur upper stage. No, oh, we've really tossed it high up. I don't know if it needs it or not, but we'll see. Okay, separation, ignition. I'll we'll keep to about 20 degrees for now. And physical time warp. Lots and lots. And yeah, looking at it, we might be lucky to get 2,000 meters per second left by the time we make orbit. Okay, here we go. We're headed down. Hopefully we'll have enough time. We're ending up a little bit lopsided. Well, if we weren't lopsided, I think we would end up with about 2,000 meters per second left in this stage. But we are lopsided, so we have less. Anyway, let's get into daylight. Okay, uh, well, let's just separate it off. And we'll do some maneuvers with it. Let's extend the soul panels, or because I have KSB Interstellar in this install, it says activate receivers. Let me stage normally. That should activate the RCS. And yep, that looks fine. Oh, don't hit the other stage, though. Okay, um, just go prograde, why don't you? Alright, so extending the antennae. Again, don't know why I have so many, but you know, it's good to stay in communication and everything. The collider on the antennae is on the stems, so it's a little bit hard to click sometimes, but there we go. Okay, so. RCS seems to be working well. There's no reaction wheel hiding out or anything, right? Okay, good. All right, and the ion engines? Well, they're making sound and they have a plume. There is a readable accelerator. Let me turn off the RCS. There is an acceleration of 75 microns per second squared. 0.0002 Gs. Um, you can't read the thrust like this because it's too low. They, they are supposed to use 12.5 kilowatts, it says 13, but it's really 12.5. These are producing 9.8, but we don't seem to be losing electric charge, so I don't know how that all works out. Um, yeah. Uh, if I retract the solar panels, we should lose power, right? Or have I done something wrong in that? It seems like I've done something wrong in that regard. Oh no, no, we're losing power. Um, not as much as I thought we were, would. That'd be 25. Oh, that's what I configured it for, but does it auto limit itself or something? I don't know. Anyway, that works. It's consuming things, xenon gas is being consumed. Our orbit is slowly being raised eventually. I mean, we can see some tick of the apoapsis and periapsis. Unfortunately, I don't have these ion, ion engines such that we can time warp while using them. That's a totally different thing. Case being interstellar also complicates matters a bit. When it co oh, it's, it's probably managing the power, actually. Uh, no, it, uh, yeah, it reads. No, it doesn't actually read the ion engines in this, does it? Net power 18.9 kilowatts. Anyway, we're not getting to moon just the moon just yet. Uh, we'll have to figure that out some other time. But here it is. I'll link the parts in the video description, and we begin our gateway journey, I guess. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.